Hi, today I'm going to show you how to drop missing values from your pandas data frames using a method called drop in A. Now this is a super critical skill because handling missing data is a very big part of data analysts and data scientists work. So let's take a look in the Python pandas code. By the way, you can follow along with all of the code I'm about to show you by visiting my GitHub page. We'll get started coding in Jupyter Notebook by importing pandas and aliasing it as pd. And just to let you know, my pandas version is 2.1.1. I'm loading in some data now using the read CSV function. If you want to learn more about the read CSV function, go ahead and check out my past video. This function allows us to read in some CSV data, and that data can be found on my GitHub page. It's called pet data, and it has lots of different data about various different pets. This data set was generated with the help of ChatGPT. If you'd like to see me make a video about that, let me know about it in the comment section below. Here's what the top part of that data frame looks like. We have various different pets, the pet type, what kind of food the pet eats, the amount, and possibly a brand name for that food. And let's go ahead and check out .info as well. This will allow us to see various different properties of each of those columns. We have 500 different entries overall, different rows in our data frame. There are five different columns, but as you can see, all of those columns contain at least a few missing values. So right now, our data frame has 500 different rows. Let's drop some of those missing values using the drop in a method. So we just reference our data frame and then write drop in a with two parentheses. Checking that out, we now see that we have values filled in for every single row for every single column. So just how many rows did drop in a get rid of? Let's take a look at the shape once we've done that drop. We only have 56 values left. And we started with 500, so we've reduced by about 90%. A lot of times, that's just far too many values. It turns out that this drop in A is actually getting rid of all of the front rows that have any missing values at all. So now when we look at info, we have 56 rows, and all of our columns have filled in values for every single row. Drop in A without any other modifications is actually going to get rid of any row that has a missing value in any of the columns. And sometimes that's just way too many. In this case, we actually reduced our data frame by about 90% of its rows. That's a lot of data to be getting rid of. So how can we change Drop in A to be a bit more lenient? There's a couple of different ways to modify Drop in A. First of all, we can go ahead and drop only the rows that have missing values in all of the columns. So by that I mean we're going to switch to this how property and we're going to switch it to all. This will actually drop the rows that have missing values in all five columns. So if we have any rows where we just had blank values everywhere, this command will get rid of those rows. If we copy this code and add dot shape after it, it turns out that we only got rid of four rows. There were only four completely blank rows in our data set. We definitely want to get rid of those four rows because they're just not useful at all. But now it seems that instead of being too strict, we're being a bit too lenient. There are still a whole lot of missing values in this data frame. So what else can we do with drop in A? Ready to level up? Let's take a look at these properties of pandas drop in A in order to drop missing values in a more targeted way. One thing that I find especially useful with drop in A is specifying which columns are not allowed to have missing values. Take a look once more at the top part of this data frame. We have the pet's name, the pet type, food type, amount, and brand. So maybe we're doing a project where we really care about the pet's name. We don't really care so much about amount or brand, so those can have missing values. But the pet's name must be there, otherwise we want to get rid of those rows. We can use drop in A with a new keyword called subset, and to subset we'll just pass which column is not allowed to have missing values. So in this case, let's drop any rows where the name is missing. Great, so it looks like all of the pets have names, but let's make sure of that with a few more commands. We can do dot info, and we see that we have 491 rows and 491 non-null values in the name column. Just like you can subset with one column, you can also subset with multiple columns. So let's say that we want to make sure that every pet has both a name and a pet type. If either of these values, name or pet type, is missing, we're going to drop that row from the data frame. If we take a look at dot info on this command, 
We'll now see that we have 489 entries and we have 489 non-null values in both the name and pet type columns. So this can be super useful if you're doing some kind of data analysis or data science project where there are certain columns that just must be there and you want to get rid of any rows that are missing those. And another really cool thing that you can do is actually combine a couple of these different tips. So right now we're using subset to make sure both name and pet are there. We can also use this how argument that we've already talked about and switch this to all. This would actually only drop rows that are missing both name and pet type. So just use combinations of these different properties to achieve whatever you need with drop in A. So far we've been dropping rows that have missing values. But drop in A can also drop columns with missings instead. Here's a look again at that data frame. And if we scroll down to the info, we'll see that all of these different columns do have some missing values. So if we'd like to drop columns with missing values, we can do df drop in A like normal. And now we're just going to specify that we're switching to axis equals one. That will switch this to operate on the columns instead of the rows. When we execute that, we actually get a whole lot of blank nothing. So we have 500 different indices, but no columns. And that's because every single column in our data frame does have some missing values. So we're actually way too strict when we apply drop in A to the columns because any column with any missing at all is completely gone. So let's try a trick from before. Let's say we're gonna drop columns. So axis equals one. And now let's switch that how argument to be all. Hmm. Well, in this case, we didn't drop any columns at all because every column has at least one non-missing value. So the basic drop in A is much too strict and the how equals all version of the drop in A is much too lenient. What I like to do instead is set a threshold for the number of missings that a column is allowed to have. So here's how this could work. Let's say we set up a new variable called missing threshold, and we're going to set this to be 50% of the total number of rows that we have. So here's the total number of rows. We'll do shape zero. That gives us the number of rows. We're gonna multiply that by, let's say 0.5, and I'm gonna print that out. All right, 250. So I know that 50% of 500 is 250, but instead of hard coding that in, I'd like to set up a formula like this so that if the number of rows changes for my data frame, I can still use the same code. So let's go back to our data frame. We'll use drop in A. We're going to operate on the columns, so that's axis equals one, and we'll use this new property called fresh. And we'll set this equal to missing threshold, which we just computed to be 250. Let's execute that. And you'll see now that that brand column is actually missing. We did drop it with this command. Well, let's use one new command in order to check out what just happened. If I take my data frame and use this method called is in A, it will actually give me a true or false, is this value missing or not? I can then use this dot sum method, and I'm gonna sum up how many missing values I have in every single column. So name only has nine missing values, but brand at the bottom has 415 missing values. When I use this thresh property up here, what I'm saying is if a column has any more than this threshold amount of missings, go ahead and get rid of it. And in this case, my missing threshold was 250. If any column has 250 missing values or more, drop it. And that's exactly what it did brand had more than 250 missings, so it's gone. I really, really love this option because this is the one you really need in a lot of data science cases. Say you're doing a data science problem where you're trying to predict something and you have tons and tons of different columns, some of which are very, very sparse. This drop in A method would allow you to say, I only want columns that have a certain number of missings in them. Any more than that, get rid of them. They're not really gonna help my modeling efforts. So definitely keep Thresh in mind when you're doing your next data science project and you have a lot of missing values. Finally, I just wanted to make you aware that so far everything we've done has not been made permanent. By that I mean if I take a look at the info for this data frame, it's the exact same thing that I started with and none of our dropping has actually propagated to the variable df. If I'd like to make those changes permanent, I need to use a property called in place. 
So here's how that works. Let's say I want to drop missing values and I'll use how equals all, meaning that row has to have all missing values. I'm going to also put in here in place equals true and I won't get a return object, but when I take a look at dot info on the data frame, you'll see that I have dropped those four rows with entirely missing values. A lot of different pandas methods have this in place option, so just keep it in mind if you'd like to make your changes permanent. So thanks so much for watching, and I hope you learned a lot about pandas drop in A. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, and take a look at my entire pandas tips playlist for more videos just like this one. See you next time.